What's up, guys? What's up? And hopefully the audio is not messed up this time. Isaiah's not so, yikes. welcome to episode 26. Oh, uh, so, do you, you want to fix the camera real quick? Do you want to push it away? I forgot yeah, that we had a, a special guest this time, Mr. Isaiah here. Is that good? Good more. Good uh, more. Bring it back just more, more. Just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep no, going. No, you can see the table. You can see the table. You have right, to afford a bit more. Oh, Dan. Audio oh, seems good. All right, that's good. <laughs> but as I oh, said, there, oh, perfect. This is episode twenty-six. That's we've been doing this for six months. Can you believe that? Six months doing this. It's ridiculous. <laughs> 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 it's a good bench, man. Keep <laughs> And uh, today's topic is Milsim versus Speedsoft, and I'm not well. I'm not a huge fan of throwing labels on stuff, but obviously those have become. This is like a very painful episode. I know. So this is going to be an interesting episode. Obviously, it's a bit of a controversial subject, Um, but really, more than anything, we want to hear your guys' opinions as we're giving our own. We're going to talk a little bit about the big differences between the two. um, You know. The player types between the two, what kind of things you see, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe a little bit of our opinions about getting mm-hmm. too off the rails, James. <laughs> no, it's uh, all right. I'll, uh, I'll be good. So keep it in the comments. I soccer today in camp, and he was on it. Like you know, of course, there were a couple of gripes I had with you know, like he didn't. Fully I saw a video, and I was just like, like that. It was just like you know, no. my my thing is I we did a time <laughs> trial run, so of course this was the bread and butter. Anything speed related, speeding, you know, like shooting. Clearly. Yeah, clearly. And, uh, and and he was good, like I mean, he was on point with it. But like the purpose that I'm trying to teach is like, like you want to pile those doorways fully before you go through. Make sure you eliminate all targets before you enter a room. But you just run targets. Yeah, but yeah, and, and so he was able to just kind of run through and just shoot them all, which is good. Like yeah, like that was great. Like he was quick with that. But this isn't like a three gun competition. Yeah. Right. You know, so I was trying to keep a blend of like keeping it smooth and fast, but smooth. You know, yeah. like making sure like safely move from cover to cover. And so it was. He he actually he was pretty receptive to that. I mean, of course. I, I couldn't I couldn't get perfection out of him, but he he was really good, and I, I had no issues with him. I it's it's a very interesting style. Of Still, like fast time to change. Right. Well, okay. for the same <laughs> reason that I just mentioned. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but as I said, that's today's topic. But before we get into it, as always, we do have our few announcements. This Saturday is adult night, Yikes. which I'm so sad I have to miss because I was looking forward to this to this grub. Yeah, right, basically I'll be camping instead. Oh darn. Yeah. Um, no game Sir James tonight. Is we are we have our lights coming in, so hopefully we'll get all those installed for our first night. Heck yeah. Um, if they're not all installed by this Saturday, they will be by the next one for sure. Oh, um, but I don't know if you guys want to talk about that anymore before you. I know that's going to be great. Um, you can maybe can describe find... it a little bit for any viewers who have Yeah, yeah. So for any of you, those 18 and plus viewers, uh, this is going to be a very, very mature based night. 18 plus. Um, 18 Are you plus. ID required. There's going to be no safety kills. FPS limits going up to 400. Uh, we're going to be changing the lighting. Uh, like I said, like this said, we should have most of that lighting changed. If not, um, it'll be ready for the next one. But that doesn't matter because a lot of the games are actually we're going to be turning most of the lights off or down. Yeah. Um, not all. So I know we know yeah, some we, of you guys we, out there like the, the brighter. Environment yeah, too. yeah. So and we're going to be doing bright, bright game like all lights on, all lights off. We're going to be mixing it up. But they're all grenade, all pyro is allowed. Of course, aside from smoke grenades and tag launchable grenades, um, like you, like you real, I like you can put our things. Yeah, you can throw our ah. TVs, like crazy stuff. We like have that. them in the store. You should buy them and blow things up. But uh, give the rex some earmuffs. But yeah, so if you guys cause issues, like I really don't want to hear the hit calling, like oh, eating calling hits. Like I want you guys to shake on it. Like kill trades, I'm expecting to see like some really genuine kill trades. Like play. yeah, like just just playing with honor. We reserve the right to ban you from adult night if you cause issues. You know, like you can it's still. More, yeah, it is. There'll be less warnings. Uh, yes. Like this. Yeah. Like right. where, uh, this is a privilege. Kind this of is thing. very much so a privilege-based night. So exactly. more privilege. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, it, it should be a great night, <laughs> and I really <laughs> hope to see you guys there. That starts at 6 p.m. on Saturday. So regular airsoft gaming is ending at 6 this Saturday. 
Uh, heads up for those of you who are showing It'll be a quick play. changeover too, not yes. like a big hour delay. Yeah, it's going to be like Adult up. Swim, like at a pool. Like they blow the whistle, kids out, adults in. It's right. going to be just Boom. like that. Um, it is worth noting, and Jane very kind of touched on it, it's a very uh, audience, like the audience kind of controls how the nights go in terms of the gameplay styles, the music, the more so than a regular day yeah. where we kind of just have a set thing that we do. It's going to be very audience controlled. If you guys want to play like a uh, uh, you know, blackout night game with night vision, or if you don't have night vision, whatever. If you guys want to play an all lights on game, uh, a lot of music, no really music. Awesome. Yeah, a lot of saws are going to be allowed. Full auto. We normally allow saws. Um, yep. Only full auto during events, but we're allowing saws full auto. So that's yep. going to be lit. And one most, one last thing worth noting is the reason we did 400 FPS was kind of 50 50 in that survey we did. Yeah, it went um, back and forth. Yeah. Quite a bit. But we decided to go with the 400. We know there's a lot of outdoor players out there that they don't want to buy a second gun for just indoor and they don't have yeah. a quick change spring system. So this is, the FPS limit is kind of be able to involve a lot of the people who usually wouldn't come indoor, yeah. make them have some fun with it. But if we find that most of the player group there isn't really a huge fan of 400 FPS, we can go back down to 350. Yeah. Like, again, super heavy audience control. Yeah, here. this is um, pretty much, it's pretty much in like, it's like an experiment, like we're trying this out and we're gonna figure out what does does not work for these nights with 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 your input. Like we're like, exactly. ah yes. So uh, like definitely else. come to the early ones. Uh, <coughs> in terms of like if you really want to have input and in how this thing goes, definitely show up on Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have suggestion boxes and we're all good at stuff. So you can talk to us. Good yeah. at stuff. Well, you can talk to us. Most of this is like Pretty that much, we're cool. like the brain trust here. Like, yeah, that would be cool. You got this. You got squad. It's the brain trust here, right? Mm -hmm. So, and then um, obviously, even bigger than that is our August anniversary party coming up. Twenty six. Don't want to confirm today. Polar Star. Polar uh, Star is gonna be here. Yep, your favorite. I don't know. We don't know who's going. I'm hoping Ben will show up, the creator of the Fusion Engine, and basically all their other products. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you can't bother him. You're like, <laughs> where's your offset now? No, no <laughs> yeah, where's your freaking offset <laughs> F1? <It's laughs> the bench. Um, so they're confirmed. We have Lead Force, Vulcan, g, &G. We reached out to um, some celebrities, uh, like you know, Instagram, YouTube, and so we're still trying to reach out to more. If you have any suggestions for who you might want to see here, um, mm -hmm. put it in the comments below, and we'll try to see. Uh, if we can do that. I mean, we're messaging people that are across the pond, so no one's out of the, the realm of possibility of getting here. This is a party for all of us, you know. We're celebrating the community as a whole, so uh, anything so that you guys want to see, you know, be there. You don't want to miss it. I want to be there. Party. Yeah. There's the big raffles. Oh, and uh, by the way, oh, free register. Pre-register. It's on our website. There's an event registration website if you're um, going to be oh, playing. Question I was asked, and I actually didn't know the answer to it. Um, APOC, if you're watching, what is, is there a spectator That's what is here? Yes. So I don't know about that because it's if it's indoor, they most likely will be. Like $5. Yeah, it would, be, it would be super cheap. It's like 5 bucks just to hang out and talk to the rest. But if it's outdoors, I mean, we might do that if it's outdoors. It would just be hard to regulate that. Yeah, I mean, like people coming in, but we'll figure it all out. Like, uh, you know, it'll be all good. It won't be anything at most five dollars, though. Yeah. So it won't be anything unreasonable. Uh, but yeah, it'll be <coughs> with it, so. Oh yeah, no, it's gonna be. Yeah, pre-register. You save five dollars and you get to skip the line, I which know. is the worst part because people will camp out. I've already had about ten people tell me that they were like, Yeah, there's I'm already camping out. Part. What? Like he Last year there was several yeah. people yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's it's crazy. It's like Black Friday. Oh, also sales. Expect to see some. Oh, yeah. like, it is actually some, like Black Friday. Some Christmas level sales there. Like. <coughs> yeah. So, so I, I, I don't even know how to say. Yeah. It's, it's Black Friday. Friday. Literally, literally Black Friday. Advertise Friday. The pricing here. So yeah. Just, so you'll have to be there. Yeah. And if you're not, it'll be one day only. Nerd. But yeah. we should probably yeah, we should jump, in, jump into this. I'm like halfway into my energy drink, so I'm good right now. Uh, I'm like halfway ascended to hell. I'm so tired, but it's yeah. all good. Just uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boy. Kill the yeah. weakness. So, <laughs> see, you can do most summers. Should we? 
Get out of here. <laughs> Let's <laughs> talk <laughs> about right. airsoft. So where do we want to start with this Milsim versus airsoft discussion? Uh, do, do we want to start like what we? Milsim versus airsoft. Milsim's going to do something. You could argue with it right now. Whoops. Milsim versus speedsoft discussion. All right. Again, I want to point out, I think me and James are on the same page here. We're not the biggest fan of the labels, but it's, it is. I, I hate that. Like, I hate like putting people into groups. But yeah. uh, like, it's like, it's like, oh, this is an honor based yeah, game. Some people just, just, just like to play. play. Like, like, are, are, everyone are, are, should be the like, two party system fan. <laughs> 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 Do you see how much trouble the two party system got us in already? <laughs> From the beginning, you could say that you were the first airsoft. You were like, I warned against two body systems. Thanks, Washington. So, uh, so we we should be clear. I, as you can tell, based on who's here, um, there are no speed softers present. But I am going to be monitoring. Oh, you know, we were thinking that, but like, I don't know any adult speed softers that wouldn't just make a clown of themselves because there are a lot of good speed softers out there. But I, I would I wouldn't want to pick someone to poorly represent that community because I think that that's unfair. Because I rip on the speed soft community a lot. And you know, it's just I try to hold it back a little. Yeah, like <laughs> like I'm on a chain, like don't don't name on the chain. But uh, if it, I, I know that there's a lot of speed softers in the comments, and I probably ruined everything touching those wires. Um, but so if I'm reading the comments. Uh, definitely give us your input, and I'll broadcast it out. Even yeah, at he's, gonna be, he's gonna be in charge of the comments today, hardcore, and no, just silently go ah, responding. Actually, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So you guys, the community, will. There are the speed talkers yeah. that are watching right now. You can give your catalog of what we're saying, or, or just general input, like just what you guys want to get out okay. there for like messages. Just because. Hmm. Okay, but like I said, let's start talking about okay, let's, talk. let's talk about what we clarify as some of the like the big differences here. Okay. okay. Uh, now, in your opinion, this is something that I've seen discussed. Can speed soft be applied to like outdoor large scale games? Or I say no. Uh, kind of an indoor thing. A lot. Mm, it depends. I mean, it depends. I, don't, I feel like it falls down to the. The size of the outdoor. If it's a massive outdoor field, no. But if it's something, I mean, if you're talking like, like urban at UBG. Well, then it's kind of the same. Yeah, that'll be urban at UBG. Ur it's kind of it's still CQB. Yeah, but it, is, is, is speed talk only CQB environment? Not necessarily indoor outdoors. Well, when you I should like clarify. I'd say I mean because a lot of not a lot of their. Uh, well, is it? That's what I'm asking. That's for. that's what I would say. Personally, I would say yes. Yeah, I mean I've seen like videos like online of people like playing at outdoors games like. And you see all the speed softers pop up in the videos, but like they just they, they like just pop up, they go they <laughs> pop up they like <laughs> but you just don't see them like being too successful, I guess, in the environment. Like I don't know, I watch a lot of videos just because I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Uh, but you don't see, I mean, that, but that's out in like California where it's well, big. And that's one of the points I wanted to hit. Do you think the Milson crowd out here? compared to the Milsom crowd out west. Do you think out west they play more towards that really fast pace? I think so I, I would agree with that. I mean, um, I, to be fair, I've never played against I mean, uh, I've never, I've never played this in the west. Yeah. Videos here. But, um, you really I, go like out to Cali. Yeah, I, I've always yeah. wanted to just take like, uh, a plane ride out there. And even if I would like rent, see if I could you know, bring all my gear there, just like, you know, give it toward, what is it, what base is it based most in like SoCal? Yeah, yeah. yeah. SoCal's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. I live out there. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah, I might too. You never know. You never know where my dog will take me. But um, yeah, so it's I noticed that since Speedsoft is super big in that area, mm -hmm. uh, I felt that even in outdoor fields, I mean, it's very CQB based in outdoor fields too, and you see it a lot. You know, well, yeah, there's because they there's have, no roof or desert or buildings. Yeah, here we have a lot more woods. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, for woods play. I would say absolutely not. You're gonna get your shit pushed in. Like, I'm sorry, but yeah. it's just that style of play does not support moving in such like like because you guys favor speed. Like that's their thing. And but you and it doesn't very matter. matter. Very, matter. You La very it little matter. resistance in the way of like what they're doing. Like if they're gonna go for a run, they don't want anything to be in the way. Like yeah. how they kind of like you see that. Like they'll do their quote unquote run. They'll just go. But there's nothing in the way that's stopping them, so they're going to take the most clear path. Well, exactly. Now, that's not like me like, oh, anything we say here is not just like, oh, this is a stereotype. It's like just what we've experienced in our experience. Yeah. I just want to put that out there so that people don't think that I'm like some kind of a 
uh, uh, communists or something. Like, rrr, 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 just, it doesn't matter how fast you're moving. Word. If you can just, when you have a large field to move across, if you just sprint across it, it's probably not going to end well. You really need to strategize and stuff like that. Move slowly. Um, just stuff like that. And that, that's definitely where the downfall of it would be in an outdoor open environment like right. that. Right. Um, Isaiah, what do you so, think? Yeah. A little. Um, okay. <laughs> yes. Perfect. In my opinion, the difference between Speedsoft and Milsim is more so the rule set than anything. Oh, in a, yeah, in exactly a Speedsoft, in like a, a Speedsoft style game to me is something that's very fast paced, something <clears> that's not as objective or team oriented, something that's like mainly focused on killing. Yeah, that's really it. Awesome. Yeah, that, that, that was going to be one of my main things is, is agreeing with you yeah. completely. It's, Milsim is very team oriented yeah. for sure. Yeah. There's more, uh, there's more, you're, there's a bigger focus on First. objectives and team based gameplay. Often, one play. Speedsoft tends to be very. Yeah, it's, you could do it by yourself, and that's that's the thing. But like, if you go to, like, if you go indoors, you can pretty much operate on your own. You'll do essentially fine. But say you go to an event event, there, you're going to benefit. You pretty much have to work as a team. But the issue you run into, well, it's not an issue. But like stag requires you to maintain squad integrity, so like that's a forced aspect sometimes. But yeah. it also, within what you have to do and the requirements are, it works. There's no objectives for CQB other right. than, or I mean, whenever I talk to the speed softers, I'm like, okay, we're playing this game mode, or some of the speed softers I talk to, they're like, oh, let's just play team. We're just playing team deathmatch. They're like, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna play team deathmatch. I'm like, but you're missing the point is that there's like. An objective. objective. There's something. There's more to this game. Well, like, it's than funny. Make it fun. We noticed during big events a lot of times <laughs> that um, the one team will get full with a lot of speed softers. They like playing together. And again, I have nothing against them. Yeah. But a lot, you find a lot of times you play with the other team ends up winning a lot of objectives. But yeah. you could you could argue. But they feel like they're losing all day. Right. And that's actually what I was going to get to. <laughs> is I have to admit that I'll, I mean I'll be completely honest is off done right, like that kind of play style, that aggressive play style does work. It works, especially, especially in any, my issue in is, my game. issue is, is stupid TV. my issue is not in the real world. It no, works. not in the real world, but that, I'm that's, saying, that's my personal but also, I realize. That. But it's also, you have to, uh, in a CQB, it's in also time. Airsoft. Yeah. But Airsoft isn't the real world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what I own. The Airsoft with a the real physics, steel mindset. But, but not, not everybody, everybody does. does. Exactly. Mm. exactly. Airsoft has different, like the um, you could, the physics of Airsoft is different. Well, yeah, yeah. Airsoft Airsoft like, maybe like playing Call of Duty and being like, well, in the real world, if I got shot at the I slower, wouldn't be generating so I'm, I'm going to move the stick slower if I get shot. <laughs> like, <laughs> you have to approach, I mean, to be fair here, is if they, if they approach it like a game, we had a whole talk. We talked about this last week. How exactly. there's some yeah. similarities, you know. Yeah. There's yeah. a point where people are playing the game, and I respect that they choose to approach the hobby yeah. in that format. Uh, what I think is, in, actually, you know what? Before we continue, I want to, I want to say one thing. We keep saying that style of play. Yeah. We we should probably clarify what we mean by that. So, I mean, what's your opinion when you say I don't want to be like the only talking here? What's your opinion when it, when yeah. you, when we say that style of play? What kind of aspects would you call Speedsoft compared to Milsim? Um, I think it's more like fast-paced, kind of like running, uh, doing something you <coughs> usually, like kind of like what James was touching on, doing something that you wouldn't usually do in a real scenario in a sense, yeah. I, I suppose. So now, like, less, less concerned person. with the risk of dying yeah. or concerned yeah. with. You understand the mechanic, like the video game mechanic, that yeah, I'm going to die, but I'm going to respawn in five seconds. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Like that, I'm going to go back to that corner and I'm going to shoot that same thing. To be like going back to the wall is like the walk of shame for me. No, see, I actually, I kind of take the mentality of that whole, like, you know, if I'm playing outdoors, yeah, I play. Yeah, that's super, a little bit inconvenient. But like, indoors, I kind of, I'm here to have fun and shoot around. Yeah, no, and, I, and I experiment yeah. with my play style, I experiment different ways in a door yeah. and stuff like that. And my opinion is the more I'm in the fight, the more I can build my in the fight skills. So yeah, I'll be fast, I'll run through and I'll be like, okay, you know what, I see a guy behind the wall over there, I'm probably going to get shot tagging him out, but I'm going to have some fun doing it. Yeah, exactly. And so I kind of, I'd like to hit that kind of middle ground. Why don't you opinion. engage an enemy when you know your death is certain? Because a lot of times it's from three quarters away the field and I can steal that and it's fun. Yeah, no, I understand that. Yeah, <laughs> 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 it doesn't matter, you're going to respawn, 
you know, at an event, you're going to fight. Yeah. I'm the difference is that, like a, at like a Milsim event, you're going to, or you're going to run into things where it's like being down a man can be detrimental. Like suddenly you've got a medic or a squad gun or your squad leader or something, and that's like detrimental. That's the point where you can be upset if you got. Well, I mean, upset within. Um, Reason. Right. Not like yeah. freaking out upset, but you're kind of like disappointed oh, yeah. and that you, you got shot. see me like freak out, like, I can't play it. Like, you know, just like, I know you're like, upset with your, but it's more like an upset with yourself. You were like, I don't know, you know, this happened. Now I'm out of the fight. Sorry. I, you know, I got shot. I'm yeah. out of the fight now. And yeah. that's like a personal thing, you know? Right, exactly. And that's, uh, that's kind of what I'm saying is, you know, for example, things I do when I'm playing indoors, I never do when I'm playing outdoors. Yeah. And yeah. it's one of my favorite things to do is, you know, you can see where the battle line is um, on this field pretty easily when you're playing. And you kind of just try and sneak up your way around the team and tag people from the back. And yeah, you're going to get shot in the back. But there's something extremely satisfying about going around the field and going quack, Killing, quack, yeah. quack in someone's back. Coming up behind an entire team sweep yeah. out. Yeah. When you're actually your playing a Nilsom event, you wouldn't just lone wolf run behind an enemy squad. No, because you're you're brave and squad integrity. There's, really, exactly. Yeah. Um, there's there's, there's two there's comments I'd like to read. Yeah, um, so yeah. To bring up. So uh, so let's see. So Dean, one of the reps here, they said he. Uh, it's really it, it's impossible to say this is a versus argument, and it's all a play style. We can debate this day and night. Sure. But in the day, it's how you handle the situation, right. which I agree. Um, and then TSD Chris, he's got a die mask for his uh, icon. I'm assuming he speeds off here. Chris? Actually, he literally just said it. So, uh, Chris? Uh, yeah, yeah, I Chris guess we'll just read so, Chris yeah. comes here all the time. Yeah, so okay. he says, the reason I like playing speeds off, and this is actually very close to what you said, Des, is uh, that style of play is because it's something he can play for weekends for fun and just do what he wants. Yeah, it's exactly. less structured than Millsman, and I get that. You know, like that. That's why I like to go home and just play video games. Like, I mean, I'll run out into a quarter and just be like, ah, like double yeah, guns blazing. Right. So exactly. Yeah, you'll know, load moment. Why would you do that, Shane? For like a detrimental. Because this is like my ah. like, real life. I don't know. I'm I'm a I'm a weird person. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, and, and, yeah and, and he said he just wants to have fun with his friends and not play war, and I understand that. Exactly. I understand that. And when you're indoors, that's I don't, in my opinion, that's that's a lot of fun. It is. Um, and like I said, you're competitive. Is, so I think okay, I think one of the big issues here is that we see we can the Milsim versus Speedsoft whole thing <clears throat> is there's, there's definitely a viewpoint that Speedsofters um, quote unquote break the rules for or B have bad intentions in terms of they'll have make someone else have a bad time just because they can. Yeah. And we've definitely seen that, let's be honest. We've seen but that, that that's is the person. Of, yeah, exactly. That's, that's the right. person is not the play style, and we've seen it for Milsim people. So Absolutely. I'm oh, not going to say any so. names, it, oh, yeah. and you're not going to either. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but, uh, no. I, but I remember when I when I first There's like been. when I first played here, like way back when. I, well, I mean, it wasn't like super long ago, but it was long enough ago that like the people that everyone else complained about wasn't it was, there weren't any speed softers or anything. It was like. It was like the house team. You run into yeah. issues like that, where everyone yeah, was exactly. like, the "It's those guys. Wilson players that right. are exactly. really that's, that's actually a very really good point. I yeah, used to be. It it be. Yeah, that's actually really now. Yeah, and I thought about that a long, long time. There's a team that we both know of, and we are not going to mention it or hint at. But the story is, and you know it, is they used to host events and put all their guys on one team and oh, yeah, yeah, all the scrubs on yeah. the other team. Just as and that was their like quote unquote training. And once again, is they would have. They would make other people have a detrimentally bad time just so that would be more fun for them shooting little kids. Yeah, and that's, and that's, that's, not, that's not how you And that was a Milsim team, and it, it was still a <laughs> shitty thing to do. Yeah. And putting your experience over just having <laughs> yeah, yeah, I Yeah, I see it. That looks so cheap. And, that, and, that's why, and, that, <laughs> and, and that's why it's so, oh, okay. That's why okay. Like, life for death is so important to me because I love fighting at a disadvantage. I love to fight my way out of the impossible lot. Well, like, that's, that's like, like what I mean, I guess. Like, like the, the few times we've game gamed here is a rest, like to be like, oh, just Des and James and like this one other kid. Yeah, I love fighting it. Yeah, yeah, it's so it's much fun. fun. Uh, but I completely agree with you there. So, uh, so yeah, thank you for your comments. I like okay, yeah. to do that. Uh, so we actually, we have, the, the YouTube comments are fantastic. So we have both sides of the spectrum and I like debating with them. Guys, it better be nice. But, you know, one guy said, Apple Bill Drafts, he said, I'm not really a fan of speed top only because sometimes when I went to extreme, every time me and my friend played, our team would always um, would be not be able to move up at a, fairly at all because of speed softers. He had an issue with the uh, with the spawn sweeping and stuff like that. And it's the same so thing that we talked. That we just yeah, talked exactly. about. Exactly. Is, is they just they'll purposely you know uh, just 
take from other people's experience to do that. But once again, that's that's like the player. Like it's it's the person on that point. Like you, know, you can't do that. You want to say something, guys? Um, and then Benji, jump in, jump in. Um, oh, sure well, let, let me just let me just finish reading all this so that we can we can debate what yeah, the comments yeah, yeah, about. Do it. So Dean and I, I've always agreed this. Um, I've always, he said a good analogy to use here is battlefield player versus the con player. I've always loved to, to use exactly, that because no. you're either one or the other. We actually talked about this last week. Yeah, we literally <laughs> did. Um, no, yeah, Benjamin yeah. Strand. And so I, I completely agree with that. He said, uh, not all speed times are the same, sometimes rushing up a lot. Um, and being fast may not make you aware of things like playing from two feet away instead of playing in a sore place. Um, you know, that, that's a good point. It also depends on the field. That's what Dean said once again. See, he can be, I mean, we, we touched on that earlier. Yeah. It, it really depends on the environment that you're in. Absolutely. Um, and then Chris uh, speeds off. Uh, GSD Chris said, um, I actually enjoy playing with most of the players. And then he just rolls down to whoever. What? You don't need to talk so fast. OK. Slow down. We have 90 minutes. Um, <laughs> and he said, I actually enjoy playing with most of the players. And I think it just boils down to whether or not the individual <clears throat> plays by the rules and they have a good attitude. And actually, I wanted. Jump yeah, into that. I like on that Chris, um, Chris is my boy. I like Chris. He's yeah, a good yeah, yeah, I'm sure if I saw, I, I can't think of who you are because your icons of a mask. Chris is right. But, um, yeah, I'd have, he's my boy. I'd have, I like to, I'd have to see him. Respect. Say what's up next time. I respect him. So I can remember who you are. But that's that's actually one thing because we actually had this group of players who would show up every single weekend and they would rob from other people's experiences to <laughs> have fun for themselves. And this was an ongoing issue for a lot of people. We lost a lot of business. People vouched for Gary, but. They, they were like, I'm never coming back until, until, this, until this yeah. issue is resolved. Yeah. And uh, uh, eventually, uh, at first we're like, no, these people are great customers. They're good kids. You know, like, you know, it's a little young. Yeah. yeah. And so, but we sat down. We talked to them. And at one point, we actually talked with the parents. We invited about ten parents here to talk with them. Um, and cause as the issue got further, because you know, we talked with them. We'd be like, all right, we need you guys to tone it down. We understand that you know you're good because you're here every weekend, but right, you're right. starting to take away from other players' experiences. And they still wouldn't listen. Uh, they 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 got that game mentality where like because th these kids are excellent wonderful yeah, we don't, kids. We don't been forever this time. Yeah, no, <laughs> but, but I'm just saying like but like together like individually they're they're great, but like uh, so like, like, when they were, like yeah yeah, and I, I would I would, yeah. I would I would I held them on a very high pedestal, but that game mentality brought them down, <clears> and they them as a group uh, they thought that they were indestructible together, and eventually uh, we just had so many issues with them with their disrespect and. Eventually, you know, at first there was the whole cheating thing, but then we got the reps on them. They're not cheating; they're just being assholes. And uh, we asked them about the bad like, intentions. Yeah, the whole bad intentions thing. And finally, we reached. We said uh, for almost a whole year. We said for almost a yeah. whole year, this is the last chance. This is the last chance. They did it again, uh, and they're not going to be back for. It. They received uh, some some longer, but they all received six months six month bans and up. And since then, every speed song that's shown up has been wonderful. Like. Yep. It's just that it's just that group where there's right. individual players. Yeah, yeah, really I'm being mad at them. They they perceive it. People will they'll there are people who one they're always looking for like a scapegoat for some reason something whatever oh, they're okay, competing yeah, for exactly. what they want to kind of get. But it's also too. like it's just a few bad apples. They're like well, exactly. well those guys are speed soft. That means speed soft is trash. Those guys are Bill Soft. Bill Soft is. Correct. And since they're not here anymore, my viewpoint on the speed soft play style and group has actually changed a lot because the only time that I was e exposed to them was the worst of your community. Right. It, you know, it's but kind of like you can kind of see that. Like people are just yeah, kind yeah. Of, and so they now play like, aggressively. And I've always said play aggressively is the most fun way to play indoors. Oh yeah, it's definitely because, fun. Because that worst respawn. Well, that's how you play anyway. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that's how you. I, mean, I, I, I know you play time. differently, but nonetheless, you have to. But you have to be aggressive. There's that element like. Well, indoors, indoors, you have, you have to aggressive. aggressive. I'm just safely aggressive. Like I don't do reckless. I'm not reckless. But see, there's fun to be had. Yeah, it, it, yeah. No, I agree. And I, I guess I'm a Debbie Downer. You're taking a risk. Like, like I don't know. Like, like it's like racing your. your like you're just cars. like there's there's bad. To be yeah. Like, <laughs> like you're just standing there. You're like I know I could run right past all these guys. I could run behind them. I might take the risk. I'm gonna get shot by those guys. But it's certainly worth like taking a bad. Well, and it's one of those like you might get hit. But on the same token, there's something to be. Had it is a lot of fun if you can push right through that front line yeah. and then you're in the middle of it and it's fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so like high risk, high risk, high reward. Yeah. But I wanted yeah. to I want to point out that this isn't totally one sided. There is a lot of people that they're used to playing outside where the action is admittedly slow. Yes. yes. And that's a um, one thing Ben Grant said. Said he likes Milsim. It's just a surprise because literally when we had like um, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a video like, when we did a podcast. For Milsim, you're really like, can we change the subject? <laughs> Anyways, 
Sorry to call you out. But uh, but but the way you play, just being slow paced against Corey. And I think that's well, a good way so, to bring that up. And I want to talk a little bit more about Nilsson and how to make it for the people that like that high speed environment, how Nilsson can be just as fun. Now, on the same token, though, I want to say there's a lot of Nilsson players, and they're used to the more calculated, slow movement speeds. Uh, I won't say slow movement speeds, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Like very highly out. calculated movements uh, through an environment, and they come somewhere like this, and they see a player that A, knows every square inch of the field. And they're put against that, and admittedly, that's a disadvantage. But yes. as we mentioned, that's kind of fun in its own way. And you're willing to accept that. But a lot of times, they'll be shot by someone who, you know, has a polar star, has rapid trigger response, and they'll be like, "Oh, speed soccer, so damn kids, yada yada." The fact of the matter is, you have to respect that you're in a different environment, and you need to adapt to that environment. So yeah. at the same time, there's a lot of people in the Milson communities that are huge naysayers to this play style. But you kind of have to understand there has to be some adaption to yeah. where you're playing and how you play. Yeah, um, is no, fact I agree. Playing is like a, a hardcore, calculated, slow speed of milsim doesn't work in yeah. a tight CQB environment like this. You have to be, it, as much as I hate it, you do have to do a little bit of the come out, shoot back in kind of play style that you see with like uh, speedball and paintball, as there is a yeah. little bit in the CQB environment. With milsim. Your engagement ranges are usually 80 to 100 feet plus, and you can sit there shooting, and literally you can see the pellets coming your way and go, yeah. And you lean back out and you shoot, and that doesn't work with speed stops. I'm engaging a guy 10 feet away. By the time he pulls the trigger, I'm hit. I don't have that like, oh look at those pellets coming at me. There's only been times I've been in an engagement outdoors. I literally just sidestep and <laughs> watch the pellets fly by me. And I'm just like, yeah. Because you hear those whip, 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 whip. So I. I think on the same token, there's a lot of speed softers that may say Milson just because of the play style. And That's I true. see it in the other direction. And I think people need to be a little bit more, I don't want to say accommodating, but No, they have to be open to open to experiences. There are people right. like I know this is like something Isaiah thinks, but like how can people comment on like like what Milson whole, is when you haven't been to a Milson? Yeah, yet, they're like, like I have no like, idea. Like, you know, you, you mean, don't you know, know the experience. Player. You've just seen it on YouTube. Like, yeah, you've seen it on YouTube. Actually, you played exactly against in the same direct, other direction. Yeah, it's the same. exactly. Same same you've played against players that like are Milson or are speed soft, but you haven't really like That's you haven't gone to one of the events that all of us have gone to, where it's like you haven't seen what I've seen, man. It's it's a completely different experience than coming here and just playing. Like it's a higher level of play. Uh, physical demand is a lot higher, I think, usually. I mean, to be fair, I've seen some speed softers who can run circles around Milsim players. I mean, they can do it. Like, it's, 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 no, uh, no, that, that's kind of what I'm yeah, getting at. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you see a lot of Milsim guys come here, yeah. and they play that more slow pace they're used yeah. to outside. And fact of the matter is, a, a speed soft type kid indoor or out with that aggressiveness, and again, the high risk, high reward. Yeah, yeah. And they might do something. It's a marathon versus a sprint. Right, right. And, and a speed softer might do something that a Milsim player would be willing to do run across yeah. a field of fire, uh, or slide behind colors, yeah. things like that, but they make it work. Milsim's a lot of, Actually, there's a lot of, it's the mindset. It's, it's your, it's, it's part of it's a mental game. Yeah. Like, you have to, if you have a 24 hour event that you're doing, or you have an event that's all day, you have to like, pace you have yourself. to pace yourself, you have to keep amping yourself up. It's like yourself. walking from spawn like, cave star. Right? Like, it's super, cool. like it's super easy over like in here because you be able to take a break every five minutes, whereas you might not be able to take a break for two or three hours. You're right. stuck, cold, held up in a building. Yeah, it's a or just constantly spring. engaging. Exactly. Yeah, so, it's, you're in it for the long haul versus just like, I'm just gonna keep going and I'm gonna go, and now I can just take a five minute break, then I'm gonna take a 20 minute break suddenly out of nowhere. Right. You can't do that outdoors. Right. Your CO would ream you out. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully. But um, so, so on that, um, Dean, he also said, I tend to switch back and forth depending on what happens. <laughs> I like to play more stealthy, but not necessarily most simple. When it's time to run, it's time to run. Kind of like what Dan was just saying. And then um, uh, Charles uh, had, had made a comment, and then uh, everyone put little up signs to it. <laughs> so both speed top and Milson styles can actually benefit from some of the tactics from one other. Yeah. Um, and some of the best players in the world incorporate access of both, which I 100% agree that, with. Yeah, that's kind of what we're getting at. You have to. Yeah. You have to. Like just climb corners, but keeping it fast, smooth. Because right. the speed software that you can like tame I guess it, like, if you oh, can say that, honest, but like they're so smooth. Like I, speed softers, if you can tame them to play tactically, they feel like they feel oh, stoppable. Yeah, I know. I watched, unstoppable. I watched the way Durka, and the Yeah, and I watched Dirk the way Jerka plays. Your team plays um, indoors during um, Patriot. Patriot, 
And you guys clear a building like you might see a speed softer clear a building, yeah. but it works and gets shit done. Yeah. So it's, it's just a little bit more oh, pace. It is, but nonetheless, it's yeah, it's slow and steady, but nonetheless, it's definitely that you know you move as a squad, but you still move pretty quickly compared to a lot of other teams I've seen. Uh, but uh, so Ben said, Ben really. Um, if you've actually been to a game, I'm going to give your comments some light, some weight. But uh, you did say, at a Milsim, if you don't have aggressive people, you won't get anything done. You probably have a that's bad time. Yeah, but that, that is that's not necessarily true. That's not that necessarily is, true. And, uh, mm, the but if is, you're, that, the thing is, is how it, it, it works, how fighting works, it's you need, if you're like hitting the roof, or you're clearing a building, or even if you're holding down a building, whatever you have to do, you have to you have, it's, you know, violence of action, so you have to literally be, the more aggressive you are, the more hard hitting, the more surprise you have, the more, yeah. the be, the more, if you can keep up that momentum, it's gonna be hard, one, to stop, but two, you're gonna overpower the yeah, enemy force, you hit him hard, you hit him well, fast, and you just surprise. So I will say one thing I have seen is that the Speed Stalker Shroud are very good at being aware of your surroundings, Better, I will say, than a lot of them. Ish. Well, okay. okay. People who, you know, aware of their surroundings to a degree. Well, yes, but to the point is, I've seen speed softers that take account of, they're moving quickly, they take account of shadows and sounds and stuff yeah. like that better than I see a lot of other players do. A lot of them move quick, but they're, they're, they are good at taking in what's around yeah. them and using them accordingly. But if that's, but that, like, indoors, like, in, all of them, like, in indoors, like, know. okay, the, well, indoors, that's, but that's all you have to know, to understand what enemy movement is, to, like, know and understand. Whereas outdoors, you get on the radio, it's like, oh, yep, we're getting engaged at such and such a place. Great, we know where we're going. Indoors, you have to, because indoors, it's constantly, yeah, you're aware. things well, are that's shifting that's constantly. You don't really run into that issue anymore. But if you can put that kind of awareness into outdoor play, and you yeah. can keep that energy up, that's the hard part. Is, yeah. As I mentioned, sprint versus uh, a marathon is, uh, a lot of the games indoors are 20, 25 minutes maximum. Yeah. And so you kind of can keep that adrenaline level and that hyper-awareness level up for short periods of time, trying to keep that up for, you know, 24 hour games, a whole nother story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, why, that's why my team always lasts. Whenever, like, you know, at game start, there's those people that just sprint. Right. Like, we, you'll see us walk. Like, we'll be, like, literally the last ones out of CP. We'll just be walking. And we'll be laughing at you. And, yeah, we're, and I know it looks really bad, but, like, it's a marathon. Pace yourselves. Those guys are going to be gassed out an hour and a half into the game. And we're going to still have all this energy. We can push it full throttle when we need to. But if you push it full throttle just to push it full throttle, it's, yeah. you're going to get gassed out. Yeah, that's, that's definitely something to consider. Um, I do want to kind of get on the topic for, you know, as Ben mentioned, there's a lot of speed softers that look at the Wilson crowd and they say, oh, the game plays too slow. It's not as aggressive or high speed as I'd like. Um, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Smooth there's keeps you alive. Exactly. <laughs> so, but there's something to consider is that a lot of these players, they go try, they go to a Wilson quote unquote event for first or second time. And there is something about the Wilson community that has to be considered is that when you're a team, and you guys know it, when you're a team that's proven yourselves, you get put on those more active engagement missions by your CEO. Um, you know, I've been playing a lot of those two games for the last six years, and it's the point where it's like, you know, a, a pop or when it was Pat, would be like, okay, we need to get shit done, let's grab yeah, this recon team and this squad and go get shit done. But admittedly, the first time you go to a game and no one knows who you are, you might find yourself Play a little bit slower. I'll be completely honest, but if you stick with it, you'll find yourselves doing stuff that's way more epic feeling than you'll see indoors. Indoors, the maximum you'll hit is oh, I swept around the team and tagged some guys in the yeah. back. You're okay. like, oh, this is cool. Outdoors, outdoors the level of epicness. When you like flank like a squad, of, like, when you flank a squad, you hit a you hit up the back of a vehicle with a right. uh, like that's like a the story I'll tell for like years or to come. You hold yeah. out like I remember there was one time me and my buddy Eric. We stopped almost the entire tan team for like 30 minutes because they swept around us when we knew we were screwed. And so the point where they just started engaging each other, we kind of just hunkered down. And every time they started to realize they were just shooting tan on tan, we just pop out and fire one or two <laughs> shots. <laughs> and and just, just throw them. And it literally, like, it stopped, like, a platoon size of tan. But it's one of those moments where you're like, 
This was incredible. Yeah, that's cool stuff that you can And I remember that a hundred times better than anything I'll ever remember for an indoor plant. Oh yeah. No, I never remember anything I did here. And so but you have to you have to <laughs> It's, it's the delay of gratification that you get. So it's going to be calculated. Wait, with the whole calculated Nelson thing, like, you know, you can make movements that'll take you an hour to do, but if it works, it, the, it's, it's, yeah, it's barely, it's, barely, it's plans, higher, plans will barely it's, work, especially it's in much higher than they do. But when they do, it's like, you know, dead to rights, like, no BS, yeah. like, there's nothing better feeling yeah, than doing if, that. And if you want, if, as a speed star, you want to get into Nelson and really have that high speed environment, best thing you can do, find a other, a few other like-minded people and be that squad in the field that says, hey, we need to go take that objective. Yeah. And be that squad that says, hey, I want to be there. I'll do yeah. that. And if you're successful, well then trust me, you'll see engagement after engagement yeah. after engagement where your aggressive style of play. Oh yeah, like they have QRF, which is literally like a speed stop team with Nelson gear on and you're just like, hit it! And, yeah, and they get more work. done. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. If, you, you, if you make it shown that you and your team can play like that well and get work done. It might take an event or two, but I promise you, it'll be like, oh, that's will take notice. They're they're going to be hitting this objective first. They're going to be going over there. Crossing yeah. This, and people are going to be like, wait, hey, where is fun. such and such? Or oh my God, don't go over there. Such and such is over there. You're right. like, so you get the notoriety. What's up, James? I know. You know, I'm just I'm just reading the comments. So Ben yeah, said. Ben, it's yeah. kind of like what we've been saying, like uh, like a sprint versus a marathon. Um, friend said, most of it's like small investments that you make to get towards like a bigger goal. I'm, I'm sure is what he's getting at. Yeah. But speed stop yeah. is basically going all in. Like one thing that I that I have a gripe with is you know it's just like the whole like the whole like if you want to do this in real life, like you're going all in. You know that there's like eight enemies around that corner, and you just want to just. Well, again, it's that same. It's that same high risk high reward. In what situation are you going to get in in real life where you and a squad of people are taking on another squad of people? Must never. Be in the military never. or in the police force. Like, <laughs> it's never going to happen. Okay, and let's say I'm by myself. Because speed talk explain myself. You're going yourself. to react differently than you are if you were by yourself than when you were. No, really it's, to be honest, not, if I was in that scenario by myself in real life, I'd get the fuck out of there. I, mean, yeah, yeah, I would get so the fuck hard. out of there. I'd be like, yeah. nope, there's no way I'm winning this. And I'd set up an ambush. That's what I'd do. <laughs> um, but, uh, Which you might do with Bill Sutton. Yeah, 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 no, what, what you, if, if, you're, if, if you know what you're doing, oh, well, yeah, you're going against a squad size well. element, you're either going to hunt me down away from the pass, or you're going to be like, well, if you're just like, here, I'm like, well, I have my rifle, well, there's 30 of them, I guess I could try to shoot them. It's funny, it's, cry instead. I've, I've mentioned in past years, one of my favorite things to do when I have, like, a, if I run into a squad sitting on an objective I need, or they, they like, on the line, um, is as a recut team, there's three of us, to go against a squad of, you know, 11 to 15 people is not gonna happen. Like, I'm, I'm not fucking rainbow here. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna take out that many guys. Hitting them head on, one of my favorite things to do is you peck one or two of them, and you throw a smoke grenade, and you let them see you running away, and like James said, you set up a little ambush. It literally is like and a You basically, game. you shift them into your field of play, and you put them where you want, Yeah. and you can <laughs> wreak havoc. Um, and you also open up that line, that, that hole in their front line. And it works really well, but again, it's that same, rather than just <clears throat> blasting in, be like, I'm gonna shoot 20 people because I'm a G. No, you, you it's more it's like chest. calculated. It's more exactly. Yeah. exactly. It's, you have pieces. Charles yeah. said that's why grenades were invented, James. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to the whole, like, if there's a million people, yeah, 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 yeah. that's exactly what they were invented. I would, you know, I'd be very curious to see, that's one thing you don't see, you don't see the speed soccer crowd using grenades. Grenades are so easy. I oh, mean, and, and, and I, I can understand if they wouldn't like it, though. Like, I, well, I, I, my I point is, a is point. I wish we could. I really wish we could have a fire out for day to day play. Because I think it would be really, it would be really <laughs> interesting <laughs> yeah, or, seeing speed softer type play with like a grenadier kit. Oh my god! Like that would be like, kind of epic, actually. But pulling a grenade as a grenadier is slow for them. You know, it's all about. Well, well, but that's the kind of thing is like, you know, you could do like, oh, I know there's somebody that building. Just run by a room grenade. Yeah, no, literally though, no, just toss a grenade, like, you know, some guy in, throw a grenade in, and keep you know, going. People, like, if, they if they know, it's a, a sweet. If they know an RGB <laughs> is going to roll into the room, they're going to take cover. They're not going to be like, oh, it's just a Thunder Bee. I guess I'll just be well, ready. Yeah, it's yeah, like, no. The Thunder Bees is people who play here, and I know I have, I know you have, have been so desensitized to Thunder Bees. One lands at your feet, and you're like, all right, like, it goes off. Or you just kick it back, you're just like, fuck this, I'm going to go. When the thunder bee goes off and you don't flinch, and people are like, what? <laughs> They're like, are you a man of steel? You're a legend, sir. There was, 
There was one time uh, our pastor worker, Vinny, threw in a tent I was sleeping in. And I literally, I woke up and I was like, uh, just went back to sleep. My friend Jake, who was sleeping in the tent as well, was like, the fuck? <laughs> PTSD. Right. But it's got the point. like, you have so many things go off at your feet, especially because we used to throw at coworkers constantly. So uh, it used to be like, I remember there was, there was one time Vinny had a roll of paper towels sitting on the front counter. I went by and I was like, I put my hand on the counter and just like slipped a thunder bead to paper towels, said something to him, and then just walked away nonchalant and just blew up the whole paper towels. <laughs> That's great. We do shit like that. Or throw it under someone's seat as they were sitting there. Oh my god, that's horrible. We did shit like that to people all the time. James knows. Oh yeah, yep. I, I was literally filling out like my paperwork to work here, <laughs> and Des threw a grenade, and he, he's, he's like, I, like, we were talking about something, and he just, he's like, oh, I don't know, like, what do you think, and he just tossed me something. No, like, I said, so, like, James, check this out. Yeah, and so, <laughs> like, I caught it, and, like, I heard, like, that, like, fuck. So, like, I let it go, and as it, as but I it let did, it go. It was, like, a cartoon, it's in the video, because we have it on our security cameras. He moved his hands away, and it just, it just floated there. <laughs> 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 but, um, what is over the oh, mind? Thank you. So, oh, okay. I was just not sure what that was. Before we continue this discussion, do we want to talk about the, uh, Let's talk about our, uh, our product spotlight. Uh, uh, right. Okay, I guess one quick, though, because, I mean, we're getting some great... Yeah, yeah, this will be, like... YouTube is lit. Like, quick five-minute discussion here. Dead Wait, ass. All right, um, so, the PTS video? slash KWA... Oh, oh right, videos. <laughs> Yeah, pull back Masada. This thing is awesome. So it's essentially an LM4. This is like a awesome toy gun. You probably should like two guns. No yeah, yeah. Weird. Well, I mean, I don't if know. If you so, anyways, this is. I mean, this is primarily stuff that, that we would run anyways, right? <laughs> uh, it should be the second one. Yeah, it's the second one. So these picks are kind of things that we would run uh, or we would want to. I really like the feel of the Masada in general, but. Um, Gas, like it has such a cool look to it, and then you have gas blowback. Like the KWA LM4s, like I've used them, they're really good, they're really reliable. Um, but like Des said, you know, like Des is, I don't remember, was it last week or was it the week before that we were just like, God, they're so atrocious sometimes. Yeah. Um, I don't remember. Oh, we were talking about the weird stuff in Airsoft. Yeah, that was it. And, uh, <coughs> but it does use LM4 Maddox, it comes with the PTS EPM, which can use the uh, PTS. Uh, EPM base plate, but you won't be able to access the gas fill valve. Uh, the yeah. one thing when we when yeah. we yeah right that's what I figured. But the one thing that's kind of bizarre is that the magazine is really heavy, like in comparison to the gun. I remember one of the first things I, I think complained they about. Replicate real steel, fully loaded magazine. Like old, like when I first came here, I was like, this is one of the things, just because I didn't know anything about it. I was like, why is the magazine so heavy? Like it's almost heavier than the gun, but. It's awesome. It's fully ambidextrous, so the bolt release is here. Magazine selector, magazine selector, similar to I am told real st real steel ARs. Uh, you won't be able to put it on safe unless the uh, yeah. there's like a round in the chamber or if it's like already bolted. So I can't move it. Uh, now I can move the safe yeah. thing, So very realistic. Very but realistic. You know, makes everything sense. you expect out of a KWA PTS build. Yeah, KWA. Really do a fantastic job when trying to replicate as realistic a, a product as possible. Stock pulls to the side. Doesn't yes. it doesn't exactly like lock in, but it's really solid and it works. Stock extends. But I will say about this, I was a little I don't know, I don't want to say more disappointed with the, with the recoil. Like it's still very good yeah. stick to it. But you figured But it wasn't like the UMP the last the other No. Time. I figured well, that maybe that's a good thing because the Masada is designed to handle recoil well. Do I have, do I have an argument? No. Okay. No, Maybe. Yeah. But some part of fighting that's not fun. But yeah, part of the gas of so. fighting the gas blowback is that you get a little more feedback. I want the fun. Yeah. No. I you always that. you want a little more feedback, even if it's supposed to be like see, even if it was like a vector a vector where it's like supposed to mitigate as much recoil as possible. If you have a gas blowback version of that, you still want to make a crisp feel. Now, actually, you know, we mentioned we, this is kind of our more middle sim pick. But on the same token, I'd probably be more likely to use this indoors than outdoors. Oh, absolutely. I, w I don't want to have gas blowback rifles. I would love gas only, but gas blowback. 
The issue is that they're just not consistent yeah, enough. Not they're not meant to like. Yeah, me too. Like I'll use like if I have like my TriTac and all I did was load thirty round bags into it, that'd still not be the same. Like well, this would not be able. Like, great comment. This would not be able to perform on this level. You got to show me. Um, but it wouldn't be level to compete. Com wouldn't be able to compete on a level with like my Crytac if I just did a cry if I just split my Crytac with thirty round uh, magazines like I did low caps. Well, that one's not as bad. But either way, you know, let's let's hop back. Yeah, on like, no so, thought, like to me, insulting um, people is an art. I know, right? And, like you're not even trying, bro. Like try a bit harder. <laughs> I won't ban you from the chat if you can get a good cop, a good insult. Who's man? Who's this? Since it's unknown to zero zero three, I'm sure it's a uh, several fake accounts, several banned accounts, and twenty one. Yeah, 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 exactly. Let's, let's I will ban you if your insults are bad. Okay. They're talking you're about spending bad. lots of money down there, and it's funny. I just was like, <laughs> Alex was just like, oh, you end up spending two thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, and you're only buying two patches or something. You're like, why? <laughs> Here's off one on one. Uh, but the Masadas are really cool. Um, if you're looking for something that uses LM4 bags, has a KWA system, the reliability, the gas efficiency. That's a little um, different too. But, a, but it's still an M4, but it's a little bit different and it looks really cool. Like, I don't know, I always thought the Masadas were cool, so I always wanted one. Oh, yeah. um, but if you want something different with something that's mildly compatible with what you may already have if you have an LM4 or something, then the PTS. KWA Masada gas flow bag is the item for you. But right, yeah, let's uh, sure. hop back on yeah, topic. And actually, actually, I think it. that's a good way to go into what I want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see that one. There's just there's just nothing like I don't know. What's there's happening. just there's no thought into that. That's just spam, yeah. and then you get to be banned. Like, uh, like God. either way, is uh, wow. What is your guy's opinion no on gun use that has to go? With um, yeah, calling for insults in the chat is probably a bad decision, James. I was so, I was actually hoping some cre to see something creative, like but, uh, someone would make fun of like, my stutter, but no, nothing. You never. You, you, you never so, uh, but let's talk about you know different gun use in airsoft. Is obviously there's a lot of the the P star hate when it comes to speed songs. But on the same token, I go, I go to a game like on Justice for Offensive, and I'd say at least. 30% yeah. of the players are using it. It's how you use it. The difference is it's so, so good. The difference, yeah, it's it is. Good. It but is the difference is it, it's, it goes back <laughs> again to like. He's back. He's got several accounts. All right, I'm entertained, but you still get to be banned because spam isn't a good one. So, um, <laughs> I told ah, you. dude, I don't know. Play side. How do you play? So it's how you go. And I'll just, I'll it's how you use it. It's a mix. It's like an extension of yourself. Like, there are people. Like sometimes you'll like often you'll run into issues with like it's the player like the, the speed. It's a player not the gun. All Basically. the players, a lot of like this, anybody that a lot of the speed really soft. Like it does. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. No more. <laughs> but a lot of the speed soft players that I see or I know that have polar stars either have a speed trigger or want a speed trigger. And the issue that you run into is that all they're going to do is come around a corner and they're just going to, or in general, they're just going to really spam a lot on the trigger and they just dump an incredibly large number of rounds and you're just like, what's that serves no purpose. There's nothing that that's right, doing, right, you know? Right. Like overshooting like, someone's right there. Yeah, yeah, you're at yeah, that you like and that's how <laughs> you have like three different accounts. Like, that's how people get mad. Like that's what happens. People complain about overshooting. I mean people will complain about overshooting anyways. Like people are like, oh I got shot three times, this is not acceptable. But like you run into more issues where they're, they're just like they have no control, so that's why we instated the rule where you have to have your hand on their, all of no. your fingers and hand on the grip and then doing this because doing this and this is it's just ridiculous. You don't need that, you know. Like what's, if you're gonna shoot somebody, three to five shots. What's that's hilarious what is. is back before Speedsoft was a thing when HP systems first came out, is obviously I, I mentioned I got them very, very shortly after after release, within like a week or two. And Vinny's followed suit shortly thereafter. Remember, we went to, I think it was a spring offensive game. And there was not many HP assistants there. It was only a couple. I remember Vinny was doing the total speed soft thing. As he'd see someone at range and literally go. And to the point where Rest came over to him and was like, yo, you semi-auto only. And he's like, I am, look. <laughs> and 
<laughs> Vinny was the original speed. We do that to but we do that <laughs> we do that to players here too though, because we'll see them doing that and it's just excessive. You don't need no, to put out that much fire. At any point in time, just three to five shots, add somebody or in yeah. general direction. If you're not hitting somebody with like a few shots and you have to do that, then obviously you're just You're not doing hitting. something unless, that's totally wrong. Unless your job is specifically someone says, Hey, throw down some suppressive yeah. fire. Unless you're like it's fine. You're suddenly the squad gunner. Unless you have an LMG, and even then you shouldn't be like, you know what I need? I need a DSG saw so I can just spray. I need 60 rounds a second. I need 60 rounds a second. You don't need that. Yeah, people are like, you know, I have my uh, my FCU, it's set to 60 rounds a second on full auto. I'm like, that's great, but how many times are you going to use full auto play in here? And then the one time you do, you're just going to, your BBs are going to hit each other yeah, as they're yeah. going out the barrel because you're going to That's in the one like, you're just going to shotgun. Like, that's like one of like gorilla fights. I don't that's know. Really, I that really bad. That's, I, I hate that. That's just like, dumb. Like, that's just hurting other people. It's like smashing your head against the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's so like you're like, oh, like, why? I just want. But like, you're so tough because I can just like, airsoft BBs. Like, you know, like, who are you? It's good <laughs> to have the triggers. It's like, it's great. It's fantastic to have like speed triggers and the trigger response. So you don't have to be like, oh my god, this is like a tough war. Like, it's so spongy. Like, it's good to have that. But like, you don't need a speed trigger to be able to put out fire, at least enough fire to well, engage someone effectively. See, I'll fully admit, I love having the speed trigger. Of course. Um, I mean, then again, I play with the MR role, so having a short trigger pull is kind of. Right. Beautiful to have. Yeah, because then it's just like you don't really have. I, to I, I put that speed trigger in my gun probably about a month after I bought it because it. it I mean, it changes. It changes the system, and yeah. I completely agree. If you have an HBA system, you should put an yeah. adjustable trigger. It's people that oh, abuse. Okay. It's people that like abuse. go forward. With, they with great abuse. power comes great responsibility. Mm. Thanks, Thanks, Uncle Ben. Thanks, Uncle Ben. You meant you're dead. <laughs> yeah, you're dead. Yeah. No, it's it's true. That's though. a big like, I mean, it's. Like, yeah. you know, it's... Yeah, that's, that's the thing. It's always very good for performance. And that's why you, they probably get so much hate. Like, that's part of... Because, it. like... I mean, they are... That's an aspect... Performance. An yeah. aspect of Airsoft is that it's an honor-based system. You know, you're... You're the solenoid-powered paintball guns. You have the same... Yeah. Kind of yeah. Thing. You, uh... But it's like... It's like just playing Airsoft in general. Like, how it's all based on an honor system. You know, you are given power to shoot BBs at somebody. You know, like, and to, to play, engage in this game and to have fun. And it's your job as a person to self regulate you not abusing that by, right. like, shooting people too much or by being dishonorable exactly. or being unfair to other players. Yeah. That's your job. And the thing is, like, when that's an accepted is, thing about playing yourself. Yeah, absolutely. But the thing is, you know, we're probably, like, pushing, like, oh, you need a puller star to play full style. No, well, that's what I was going to get into. I was actually going to say that exactly. I mean, there's a lot of people in the comments who are like, oh, well, I like my ADGs, and there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. No, exactly. I have an ADG. Right. One thing that people, I see I see a lot of players, like, they'll focus on, uh, like, Amoebas. The Amoebas, they love the right. Amoebas, but the Amoebas have a fantastic I've always said, if I was building an AG personally, and if, I mean, the chat this probably, probably knows, because I don't run the AGs. I yeah. hate the AGs, so I can build you the best one out there, but I hate them. Um, but either way, if I build an AG, I'd grab an Amoeba, but I actually want to uh, point something out. Um, there, I have heard passive concerns, and it was mine as well, is that with the big use of HPA systems, like the Polar Star, the Wolverine systems, the Falcon V12, all the ones out there, we kind of get into the same event horizon that you had with paintball, in which unless you drop stupid amounts of money, you weren't competitive. Right. But I want to point out that there's something hugely different between paintball and airsoft, in which that trigger response doesn't make as much difference. With paintball, they're not accurate. An accurate paintball gun maybe shoots 100 feet, and that's pushed. Yeah. Um, and therefore, rate of fire, trigger response, dominates. Yes. Airsoft, the engagements are at such a further distance when you come to especially woods play. In, yeah, um, and, and even in general. Because that, that trigger response and rate of fire might give you, you know, the tidbit smallest advantage, but it's not a pay-to-win kind of thing. Yeah. You, I can I go agree. out there. I can go out there with a freaking base. Elite Force M4 and do just as much work as I do yeah. with my DMR. It's just knowing your weapon platform and playing to its style. Yeah, that's, knowing that's your that's limits. what I like about um, Nilsson too is, is very much so like you can show up there with you know your basic kit. I mean, I, of course, it's very clear to win in many, many, many scenarios. But for the most part, like you show up with a combat machine, 
I mean, and your mind is probably the most sharp weapon in your arsenal. Exactly. And that's what really is like attractive for me. I mean, call me a nerd, I guess. No, but I, I really do like it's full body. It's, it's full like trigger, like, it's, it's like dead to rights. I love those dead to right kills where you out out fought the other enemy, mm -hmm. out smarter yeah. than you could even say, and you. It doesn't matter how long it took you to pull that trigger, no matter what, you had them. Right. And that's just what to me is just like mm -hmm, yes, that's good. Uh, <laughs> now there's something I want to bring up, which is uh, speaking of paintball and that kind of stuff. We did see with the advent of different play styles and different weapon systems that paintball shifted into there was speedball and there was woodball. And woodball, you could say, was more that middle sim environment. Speedball is more the, middle, the speed soft environment, which I think is why it's called speed soft, because it comes from speedball. Mm -hmm. A lot, you see a lot of guys who used to play that speedball now play the speed soft style airsoft. Yeah. Do you think in the future we're going to see this separation happen? Or do you think we'll kind of continue to see uh, an integration of told that? Um, wait, I really talked to Nelson were both different like versions of like speed songs. Like, is that what you're saying? I think like what like, are will we see harmony between the two? Is well, my point is, is <laughs> do you think we'll see like I said, paintball it moves into this big separation? If you're going to play Nelson style events, you play woods ball. <laughs> There's that. Um, <laughs> and if you're going to play that super aggressive play, you play speed ball. And we saw a hard separation between the two play styles. Do you think airsoft's moving in that direction? Or do you think we'll continue to see this integration of both? I don't want to see the separation personally. Mm. But how what is your opinion on everything better each and where do you think it's gonna end up? That's uh they both because they both that's they're good, both valid good thing to bring up. And, and actually I want the chat to tune in on yeah, this as well. They're both the thing is is that they're both, you know, valid play styles, especially for, you know, I guess the environment that they're suited for, but everyone can stand to learn something from somebody else's experience. Exactly. They all have something different to offer. A speed softer's advice for something is gonna be different than what maybe it makes Yeah, it could still be good advice, but you don't know if it'll apply to, you know, uh, everything. Yeah, but I mean, at least it'll, mm. it's no, hard I, to see because I mean, what I the pattern that I've seen is the more that a lot of speed softers, it's a focus, it's uh, the younger generation. From what I've seen, a lot of mo the majority of players I've seen, like that come through here. I mean, admittedly, some of our customer base is a little bit younger, but a lot of what they see is they're like, "Oh, this is super fast. It's shiny. I have this. This is right. Fire Stars. This is this." Like there are customers that I have to convince. I'm like, I mean, not necessarily convince, but I talk to. They're like, "I want to buy a Polar Star." I'm like, "Why do you want to buy a Polar Star? You know, you do just fine with your gun." They're like, "Oh, I don't know." And then they just think that. I mean, this is that's a different issue. It's, them buying a polar star is going to make them better or something. But like, fudge. Oh, I was trying to make a really good point. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, but a lot of the younger players, like, they really, they're really attracted to that. They yeah. just like the fast play. They like the Call of Duty, the video games. Well, because a lot of it's like, you'll see a lot of the kids have been spinners. Like, it's, maybe it's just a generational thing where the generate, in a way, in a way, give me a sec. Okay. It's a lot of kids. Now, because now with the advent of, this is getting deep, the advent of like uh, a more of a foray to psychology, you'll see a lot of kids that have like like an attention disorder where like they have to have, they can't focus for like an entire length of a Milsim game if they were so to have that. that so speed soft, speed soft, in CQB in general really plays to that like I can focus in the game for 15 minutes, but then five minutes later I really don't care what I could be doing kind of thing. But you'll notice a pattern, like, as people get older, they're like, yeah, I really just, I kind of grew out of that play style. People are like, yeah, I mean, there are plenty of people that aren't young, but that's just a pattern that I've seen here, is that right. people get older and they realize, they're like, I need something new, maybe it's a different challenge, so then they step up to, let's say, a middle sim style. Well, sure, that's actually what I was going to say. Is it an evolution? Is it just young kids? I mean, I've seen plenty of adults that do that, actually, too. Actually, yeah, Dominic Little said, he, he says he agrees with you about the speed time is being mostly young, um, and he said that, uh, you know, as you get, to, as, like, you go to Millicent, most of the crowd is older. Yeah, but on the other hand, though, and I, I replied in the comments on YouTube to this, is that, is that, on the other hand, I've also seen quite a few speed offers in their mid to late 20s. That's what I would say. They just rock it. That's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Rocket, yeah. And that's what I would there's say. there's yeah. definitely the obvious age yeah. group. And actually, too. I want to I wanna jump in on that a little bit, too. I think a lot of it, and it used to be, really airsoft, there wasn't much for pickup games. It was mostly Millicent no events. Yeah. And as someone, you know, when I first started out, we had a couple games at Warzone and stuff like that. 
it's hard to get into the hobby when all you have are these really hard um, like outdoor games. It's, yeah. it's harder to get into that environment. It's harder you to get a lot more kit. On the level. You have to have a lot more kit. It's like the pain of play. The, right, well, the, the, the insert cost is a lot higher. Let's right. just say that. So I think a lot of people start indoors because it's, it's you cheaper. get in cheaper. Yeah. And like you said, short games, you forget something or you need, realize you need something, there's usually a shop right there. Exactly. Um, it's easier to start indoors. And then I think yeah. they see that play style. Right. And they adapt to the play style. Everyone learns from what's around them, and they get used to that speed style type play. I think that's a big reason we see a lot of the younger crowd yeah. is, I mean, it's easier okay. because it's cheap. Because you go in, you buy, you know, if you if you were going to be like generic, you go, you buy your uh, dime mask, it's a hundred something dollars. You have a gun, you can buy something like you can buy a battle belt, or you can buy a chest ring, and your loadout's essentially right. finished. And you know, whereas Milsim, you have to have. You know, if you're going to an actual Milsim game, you need to have faction specific, you need to have your BDUs, you need to have your helmet, you require a radio, this, 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 right, this, right. this. And let, let's take a moment to be honest here. When we're playing a Milsim event, and you have a couple kids thrown in your squad, and they're 12 or 13 years old, what are your thoughts? I, well, I would just want to go home at that point. Right. Now, you're playing indoors. This happened to me. Right. Right. Well, now, now, now you're playing indoors, indoors, and a couple 12 or 13 year old kids are thrown on your team. You're like, okay. Yeah, like, all right, cool, let's learn. Right, yeah. so and I kind of want to play that, and that's, I think that's why we see a lot of the younger crowd, because there is something in the community that definitely pushes the younger crowd away from building some events. Yes. Not yeah. only the cost bracket, but also, I mean, if I was a 12, 13 year old and I go here and there's a bunch of 40 year old dudes shooting at me, that's a little intimidating. Yeah. Um, so I think that's where we see a lot of the age difference, too, is not necessarily the generation type, but also just it's easier to yeah, start it's an easier entry point. Point. and we see I've seen a lot of a lot of kids who start in, indoors and, and they, uh, now they might not come here as much, but I see yeah. them in every Nielsen game I go to. And I'm talking, you know, that I know they're not watching, but either way, it's like Hunter, Brady, I'm sure you remember them. They're yeah. two super regulars here and I got along with great. They don't really come here much anymore, but every time I go to out, an outdoor game I see them there. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times people transition to that. Yeah. Stuff. Like me personally, you know, like what? I started not I like know. here, I only play. Really? I saw. I thought I saw them. Maybe not this last one. I haven't seen. Last one, Justice. I saw them. Uh, uh, last one, Justice. Okay, maybe not. Brady went to Spring and Pencil here. Okay, so yeah. my point is they've been playing yeah, as long as I. Yeah, they've been playing. <laughs> but like, I mean, like I started here. Like this was the only field I knew about. So I came here all the time. But then I got on a team, and they were like, "Oh, we want to go do these events." And they're like, "Oh, let's go do these events." And then so it just keeps building. Exactly. I I had the same kind of progression. I started here. And I, I kind of almost, I want to say like I almost played the same kind of speed soft ish mentality like a few years back. The the problem I ran into with is like I'm shooting at kids and like I have a great amount of experience. Like I don't want to keep shooting at kids. And then I learned about Milson. And there's dudes that have been playing as long as I have. <laughs> yeah. Who all can like you don't want to you can like out you want to challenge you want to exactly. you yeah, you challenge yourself. You and, you come here like you'll see players that are like. All they want to do is they want to team up and they just want to shit on little kids. They're yeah. like, I kill like 20 sweatshirts. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, I say it like, all the time. It's like, yeah, it's I kill cool. 20 sweatshirts, so I guess I'm pretty amazing. It's like, like well, you shot like 30 good. kids that literally do, they don't, they, you, these people probably haven't played, but they played two or three that's times, so they have no amount of experience. No, no, but, uh, like, so that's amazing. Like, you have no, like, you might as, yeah, exactly. You might as well just set up targets in a kill house and just shoot at those. It's like, um, well, it's kind of like, you know, I would say there's two types of people. There's people who like being the smartest person in the room, and there's people who like being the quote-unquote dumbest person in the room because then they can learn. Yeah. They would say, you know, if you're a smart person in the room, you're in the wrong room. The same thing kind of goes with airsoft. If you rather surround yourself by people not as good as you so you can feel better about it, yeah. you're not going to grow. Yeah. As yeah, like, I'd much sad. rather be the worst person playing in an environment and oh, see yeah. That people around me. I am definitely one of the people I love surrounding with people myself. I love surrounding myself with people that I think I can learn from because Absolutely. it helps you grow. Um, and it's the two types of people you see. There's a lot of people that there's definitely some comfort with being the best person in the room, quote unquote. Uh, but you can grow so fast. Yeah. But you mentioned Cobalt. Uh, you first saw from Cobalt before that. Yeah. Well, it was. Um, it was. So. I'm sure that you know it's it's very easy to get that gratification of just running training all day every day. That's just your life. 
But Cobalt, um, he actually runs the Stag Ops team. He runs Stag Ops, who uh, put on Auto Justice Spring Offensive. He is like, he literally invented Milsim. Like, I'm pretty sure, like, we can. I wouldn't say that, but he, right. he, he, was, he was like one of the pioneers. Like, he was one of the dudes who put up, he stepped onto the Plymouth Rock, Plymouth Rock <laughs> of Airsoft. All right, he was, he's an airsoft pioneer, or Milsim pioneer. Someone else discovered it. Christopher Columbus already discovered it, but then he was well, like, 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 I'm going to discover this part. But anybody, <laughs> he's been around, he's been he's around, been around for a while, yeah, but the quality of his games and and what he does is, is I feel like, in some places, that's kind of unmatched, the amount of, like, depth that Cobalt goes into. Like, you read the op words, well, this is getting a little subject, but you read this stuff, you're like, Holy crap! This is like story, oh, yeah. and this is this, and this is this. Like, so to take it to that level is incredible. So cobalt's a cool. Yeah. Anyway, it's, anyway, it's, so kind of building so upon that, that is like, uh, you know, it eventually it gets boring. And he likes to say when you're spawn trapping the enemy, it bores the victor and upsets the victim. Yeah. And yeah. I and I really no, agree I with that. I and like, that anyone who really truly understands what the game is and is there to learn, it'll get boring. Like even when I play video games, like I'll like if I do three games, my, my rule is if I do three games, top of the scoreboard, I'm done. Like I I'm bored. Like if I truly get top score, that's just getting more done. An hour and a half, like 30, like thirty minute games of conquest. If I sit down an hour and a half, I am the best player in that server for an hour and a half. I'll leave. Right. I'm like this. I'm sorry. Oh, this is boring. It, it's kind of like you know. I even mentioned how we ended up kind of spawn trapping Tan uh, during yeah. Spring Offensive, but literally after like, we did it for like maybe 20 minutes, and we were like, okay. We literally, I, I, I radioed for the rest of the uh, recon guys, and I was like, guys, I'm bored. Like, yeah, it, it gets let's boring. Let's go something else. And, that, and I think that, like, <laughs> that's the kind of thing that you should, that, I think that's what more players should do. Like, you should recognize if you, like, make even, 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 you're, you're even like, if like, you're yeah. like, you're like, oh, it's so, you know, like, you spawn trap the kids, it's like, well, what I would always do is I'd call my team back, because, like, there's no point. Yeah. Like, and they're they're just stuck back there, they can't move, no, they're not having fun. fun. Literally and you're not having fun, because you're just like, I see a guy, bum up. Like, do something challenging, like, run oh. a gas blowback, or run only a pistol, right. or get... I mean, I'll like, admit, part of my motivation for trapping Tan a little bit is revenge for Auto Justice. Forever. Forever. <laughs> just <laughs> for all of you. <laughs> That was pretty lame too. Like we, we would like roll dudes. We're like, well, we're like I'm gonna switch to hand next next year or whatever. And I'm like, well, like why? And, like, you, you fight? Weren't, like, and you weren't having the most uh, fun. Just yeah, sitting there at the top like, of the hill, being like, all right. Because like if you if you're like the best player and you're like rolling people, then like there's no way to pro there's nowhere to progress. Like there's yeah. nowhere to go further. You're just right. stuck. Exactly. Like you that's are the top. Yeah, that's, that's why, why you should just keep. Which is nice. <laughs> that's why you should just top. keep moving up the ladder. Briefly, yeah. Like I really like, nice like I've enjoyed my time here as the best, but I want to do it. And that's and kind of kind of sorry. I hate the whole bit of wounds, but like kind of like with those kids that uh, that we had to ban is like I was we I think we were all kind of silently hoping that they would get bored and try something different. But so they I did. did. Yeah. So yeah, like, like just just to try something because they they legit, like they've only played here. And like two other local fields, local being within like three hours of us. I mean, I tried to convince them to come to just bring them. Yeah, but they just wouldn't get out of that comfort zone of being the best, and that's that's where the issues arose. Great, great. Uh, I, that's why I I kind of liked, like I don't know. You should keep always trying to make steps. Like you don't like you know you're kind of over yourself. Like if you move, off light, if though, you should move, like, like I said, they, they do move quickly. Yeah. But who, yeah, I feel if he, I'm always impressed with their flow. Like uh, for camps, one of the kids, he hasn't played in a while, but he's a speed stop kid. He's, and nice. he, he's, he's a wonderful kid, really great kid. But just you know, like I was really trying to like drill into these these kids, um, like trying to be smooth, pine this corner smooth. Don't be so aggressive. Don't be so jagged. Don't walk like waddle. Like you know, keep it smooth. And granted, you know, I I, I mentioned earlier in my groups earlier in the podcast, like you know, let's try and eliminate all the targets before you get out of that building. But what I'm getting at is like he was so fluent with everything he did. The way that he pied the corners, it was just a nice S with everything as he pied it. And I was really impressed with that. And that's something you don't well, see a lot. I'd say one thing that I've seen a lot of the, the I will say more advanced speed softers, ones that have been doing it for a while and aren't playing just to be assholes or playing just because it's how they like to play. Um, they will sprint across the field and it's like their guns on one of those camera cameras. They're yeah, it's very like the, well, no, no, I mean just like their guns be it's locked and straight, and their body oh, yeah. they'll be sprinting full bore, and their guns just locked on target. And I'm I'm impressed when someone can yeah. do that well. 
Yeah, uh, it's not obviously the hardest skill in the world, but it's something a lot of people you'll see them running and their guns like. <laughs> <laughs> they got their own <laughs> what? what do you want to do? But it's very, <laughs> but it's very straightforward and it's very, it's it, it lends itself credit. well for precision. Exactly, I give them credit. On like that you're one. setting yourself up for much success. Much success. Any more interesting yeah. comments or anything? Uh, like Charles, I know I don't because I know that the um, that it's it's really annoying on on YouTube and Facebook when you type a comment, it instantly shows up for me. But they could be watching a version of the video that's 10 seconds behind, so it's hard for me to pay attention. But anyways, Charles said, uh, uh, trying to soar with the eagle does not work if a part of the flock, if a part of a flock of turkeys. And I get, you know, what you're getting with that. I just forget <laughs> which way I'm part of this conversation. Can you run that by me again? I got. Trying to soar with the eagles does not work. Wait, no, say it again. I didn't hear that. Trying to soar with the eagles does not work if you're a part of a flock of turkeys. So like I'm guessing what you're getting is like if you're so if you're um, genetically different if you're genetically special just don't bother. <laughs> yeah, I mean I, I get what you're saying, Charles. Damn. I get what you're saying. Damn. I understand the point you're making. Yeah. But uh, I don't, I don't quite understand the context. To be honest. Yeah, that that that's maybe maybe we'll clarify. Yeah, let's let's just wait for the result. Oh, now I understand. Like, okay, wait, why do Ted? You know, let's keep going. Uh, <laughs> we got, I got about 15 minutes left. Goons. I kept going, sorry. My, I was like, what the, like, the, ah, okay. Uh, yeah, do you have anything more to add, James? Uh, I'm like, just like the whole topic. The whole topic. I mean, we've like covered so much already. I'm really impressed. And YouTube has been fantastic. Good, I'm glad. Uh, like, the comments have been very civilized, of course, until I challenged someone to insult us. Who just spammed us. Once yeah. again, that this was, is why we call him damn butt. I mean, I always, I always kind of hope, like, to me it's a game. To me it's a game, so like, alright, insult me, like, make me feel bad about myself. Like, I genuinely want to, like, cut myself to sleep from your insult, but he just That's pretty much what we do all the time when we're working anyway. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So clearly like, this works so well last oh, time that it's once again challenging the chat to insult him. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> He learned from his mistakes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, thanks. We really <laughs> covered so much already today. Like we went everything dude, from these specifics. He's swearing on a live stream really hardcore. Bro. Yeah, dude. Like let's no, okay, let's spam the answer. Anyways, but yeah, we know like <laughs> fucking in airsoft. We, we covered oh, such a great amount, and I'm really impressed with like the community. Facebook's been a little dry, um, but I mean, I did, I did post in Facebook like let's go to the YouTube because that's where that's where the right. chat that's where the comments are. Um, a lot of people are watching from the start, and they have some great input. Dean has been yeah. watching from the start. Charles has watched the start. Uh, Chris, TST Chris, he hasn't uh, responded a bit, but I'm sure he's still watching. If not, uh, that makes me sad. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. What about you? It's nice to see, you know, no. uh, every actually, corner of the community come together for this debate because it's a very hot, hotly debated one. And yeah. honestly, you know, we have like 12 minutes left, and you know, I'm just sitting here thinking, like, wow, I actually don't want to go home and kill That's myself okay. after this stream. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, this section has been pretty civil. There, there's actually something I want to mention. Is uh, when I started playing airsoft more uh, regularly. Uh, again, this was probably about seven, Whoa. eight years ago. At this point, it was before extreme existed. You had M and M's in here. <laughs> and um, the uh, at the time, obviously, there was no indoor field around me. Warzone was the closest outdoor field, and even then, the crowd was limited. His mm -hmm. own is my friend Dan Cozy, um, who I don't watch this stream once in a while. Uh, he was like, oh, hey, Dex, why don't you join my team? And, uh, and we hit up all these Milsa events, yada, yada. I had never been to a big event like this. I think one of the first ones I went to was Gravedigger RPC. It was in the middle of August, and there's a reason that's called Gravedigger. Um, but either way, is that where other got introduced to the kind of Milsa? Uh, the RPC, that's, is that, that's not me. That's, that's uh, New Hampshire. New Hampshire? OK. Um, ironically cool. called Rockingham Paintball Club, they don't that's weird. It's kind of fun. That's weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a small deal. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's impressive what they do. It's actually uh, But either way, is that's how I got introduced to the Milsim environment. And I've kind of stuck with it ever since. And I've really enjoyed the, the tacticalness that comes to that style of play. But I want to point out is that probably wouldn't have happened if it weren't for someone who had been playing airsoft a couple of years more than me, older than me, um, being like, hey, why don't you join in on our kind of stuff? And, and that's a big part of it is, you know, a lot of players are like, Murr, Speed Softer, man, it's Milson. If you really want someone to kind of, if you really want to grow your part of the hobby, and that's the issue a lot, you don't see a lot of younger guys getting into Milson. And I think it's because a lot of the communities kind of returns back to this, like, you know, outcasting. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of outcasting new players. If you're someone that is into Milson and you want more people to play Milson, 
go, go to yeah. local field and be like, hey, you know what, it looks like this kid has some potential, or hey, you know, maybe this kid's willing to have a good time. Invite them to, you know, go play with your team once, or like, invite them to I, I think events. that a, a lot of, what a lot of people, and what, I mean, I, thinking about it now, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm at fault for this, but I'm always like, oh yeah, like, try and know some game, like, like try and know some game, but what I haven't been recommend, re recommending is play a walk on outdoor game. Yeah. Because I, because I'll tell people like who have only played in here, like you got to go to Stag Ops. But yeah, as I'm saying this, I'm kind of thinking like yeah, maybe yeah. I should push them. I didn't think forwards. about that really. Yeah, because we always say like it's like literally zero to no, one. Really yeah. Well, so the issue is this walk on games have kind of start with the advent of so many indoor fields. There are less pickup games. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I know. Uh, there's a couple at Warzone here down the street. They're doing well, I say went to UBG. Uh, uh, this UB, UBG is pretty good about still having some pickup games. Um, Fields of, uh, uh, mm -hmm. what was I going to say? Field of Fogs, they have pickup games, but I mean, that's a hug. Uh, and that's the issue, is it's hard to say, you know, oh, just go to sure. a regular game, but it's, it's, you know, it's a two hour drive. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's where it's kind of like, it's if hard you're going to make a drive, it's yeah. almost like you want it to be, uh, be worth it. But, but the thing is, a good introduction. Yeah, like, but when you asked <laughs> that me, was like when, when we were at the field in parks, we were just like, it's not the same thing that I want people to go to a game after yeah. two hour drive and be like, there's 12 people here. Yeah, but the yeah. thing is, like, what, yeah, what, what, what I'm getting at is, is when you said earlier, like, when you asked me the question, if you were on a squad with your hard hitters and they threw, um, like, six, like, 13 year olds who have never played before, what would I do? And I said, I'd leave. Right. But, I wouldn't feel that way if I were at a pickup game outdoors. I would absolutely take them under my wing. But for me, that's like showtime. You know, like that. Then, like everyone's like, we prepared for this. Like we. It's like you're putting out a play, and they're like, oh, here's this guy who is. Yeah, here's this guy who doesn't know the lines, and he's just thrown on the stage, and you're like, right. go home. Right. Yeah, it's the same thing. So I wouldn't be trying to be more vigilant. Look at this. I'm learning today. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be like, ah, look at this. <laughs> but that's one of the cool things is I always, whenever I talk to <laughs> customers, they yeah. like, they, they talk about doing the whole. Events and I tell them, I tell them always like go to Springer Fence and Autumn Dress is really Stack like, even like, yeah, it's, 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 it's perfect really because true, you yeah. can still, there's still, you can show up in your PJs. yeah, exactly. As long as you're, <laughs> as long as you're faction appropriate, <laughs> as long as you're, <laughs> <colored>. <laughs> but like, you don't even have to play like the whole time. You can take it, you can take it at your pace. Like, it's not a deal breaker. Because there are 400, there are 200 other, there are 150. 180 <laughs> other people on your team, so you're not on pressure all the time. So you can, <laughs> if you need to, you can kind of take it your own pace. It's just a little bit nicer uh, for like intro. But you can also still do things like you can still use a high cap if you haven't been able to afford 10 mid caps. So you can use the right. high cap. You can run whatever gears you know as long as I don't care. I don't care about gear. Whatever, as long as it works. For like, years, I played with a UTG bolt action rifle and literally put magazines in my pocket. Yeah, I have hydration care. That was my loadout for literally three years, and I was going to big Nielsen events. Yeah, and people were like, "Oh, look, this kid knows what he's doing," because I was friendly. Yeah, and I tried to learn. Yeah, and you don't need a million dollars to go do it. You know, the one thing, okay, the one investment you have to make, two investments you have to radio. make: radio and boots. Radio. And I'm boots. sorry if you don't have a radio or good hiking shoes, you will not have a boot. No, yeah. and the radio we just covered that in a bunch of other. Yeah, streets. the radio is also a safety aspect. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's especially, really and so especially with fields. Of, I mean, um, field good farms. Like that was a really mess. Like, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or you could get lost for <laughs> the first forty five minutes of a game. What? That's still get lost. Feel good. We got lost for forty five minutes. I think everyone has, has a. a everyone has a. We got lost at field good. <laughs> yeah, like it was literally the first 45 minutes, we were like, okay, well they didn't give us the right map online, not the right map at uh, in the email, or not the right map at spawn. Like they were like, yeah, this map isn't even right. I was like, wait, you're giving us the wrong map? You're not even gonna, okay, whatever. I remember it like, it's cool. I was still like, there was it's cool, but like, I was just like, why can't you give me the right map? We got lost for 45 minutes. Okay, okay, good, bring this up. So, so I, I had a day, so we've been kind of rambling on about like, you know, getting speed stalkers out into our comfort zone. So what, you're gonna try to argue that? How, so, cause, cause earlier, a couple comments were like, oh, well, you know, like, you don't see older people in spandex and dye masks. Not how true. Would, how would you get there was a Wilson whole, player? There was a whole sponsor. Like 50. 
Like okay, 50. I think 40s is fair. But 40 and 50. I mean, well, because at that point, one of our favorite players, uh, Matt Dowell, he's, I think, 42, I want to say, or something like that. Yeah. But he's like the, he's like Super Mielsen. He yeah, is. But he still comes here and has a great time. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's I think, he still, like, runs on the field. Like, it's, it's, it's not really, like, a Milson play style. He's still kind of... But that's my point. He yeah. comes here and plays aggressively. Yeah. And outside, he plays tactically. Yeah. And that's a, that's the best kind of player. Someone yeah. who can adapt to their environment and play accordingly. And I want I definitely want to say something. Is every time I, I know somebody in the Milson crowd, and I'm like, hey, come down to the stream. They're like, ah, it's not my style. Or, you know, the guys I play with, Odin Spear, amazing players. And a lot of times they're like, ah, Milson's really not my thing, or I don't have a gun that that's that kind of the right yeah. FPS, which is why we're doing the 18 plus thing. Right. And kind of we say Stag Ops is your intro to no, good outdoor good. plays. Yes. Honestly, and this is a shameless plug here, but our 18 plus legs are good intro to indoor play. Yes. yes. Um, yes. It was really the crowd. Exactly. Really really is. Is. But I already have an answer to my question, I didn't even know right. it. <laughs> so, but on the same token, is every time I have someone who says, it's not my style, I'm like, trust me, just. Just come down and try. You don't it have to once. wear all the gear to be a speed it, most, but most of the time, well, I have friends that come down and oh, try it, and they're just like, try it. Yeah. Oh my try god, this is fantastic. I remember the first time I think it was Fry came by. He's like, you know, I didn't think I was gonna like this, and he had a great time. Yeah. And I know, I think Trap. If I remember correctly, if Trap said the same thing to me one time. He was like, you know, I didn't really think I was gonna like this at all. I thought this was gonna be it's like fun. whatever. Yeah, and it's he was fun, like, yeah. it's a great time because you don't. And I know you said you still care so much about the Nielsen environment, but there is something to be said about being able to come here, put your skills to the test, but not have to care as much about yeah. what you It's, your it's just it's not, not as intense. You won't have a massive negative impact like on your team. Like if we've all had our experience where we hike through the woods for two hours to try and get around objective, and you get tagged because you missed that one guy behind a tree, and you're just like, fuck, oh, son of a bitch. Oh, yeah, I yeah. Freak out. You're like, even if it's a turtle, you're sitting there going, I'm so stupid, I can't believe this. <laughs> and you get angry. Yeah. And it were CQB, CQB would be like, you know, I'm going to try and sneak through power yeah. line over here. I'm going to try to get around this guy. So you get tagged and you're like, oh, I messed up. But now you go I'm back to spawn and now you're like, OK, let me, yeah. let me be better this time. Yeah, exactly. If and you know where someone is, you can find, you know, just outplay someone. You can figure it out quick. You have to be. It forces you to think on your toes because CQB is right. fast paced, it's always changing, you never know what's right. going to happen. Right, like I said, so I play happens. so differently indoors than I do outdoors. Yeah. It's about adapting your environment. And just like to all the Speedsoft guys that we say, try Milsom, it's better than you think. To all the Milsom guys out there, try, CQB. try indoor play. The 18 plus night would be a great time to, and a great interview. Ask his speed software to take you under his wing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, come yeah, try it. it. Come no. try it. I guarantee you'll have more fun than you think you will, yeah. as long as you come with, at it with an open mind. Yeah, if you come Which with an attitude of, oh, I'm going to go here, I'm going to have a good time, I'm going to or just gonna play your sides. Yeah, I, I, know, I know people who come here and they have the mindset, this isn't going to be fun. And guess what? They don't, they have, don't fun. have a good time. Come with the open mindset, I guarantee you'll have at least. A reasonably good time. You might say, "Okay, you know, I did that once. I don't really need to do it again." Or you might come here and say, "Wow, like for 25 bucks or 15 bucks, you can come on a Friday night." Yeah, the most like it's time so time cheap. Show. Like it's like you're good, not missing out. It's on a good run. end of the week event. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it is. It is very good. Like today when I ran camp, I followed every single like when we did our drills, and I, you know, I, I had them you know, like run it just like you know a bunch of kids on the pit on the drill at once. But then, once they all were warmed up, you know, I was just I was running with every single one of them and yelling. I'm surprised I still have a voice right now. <laughs> but like, it's it is very good. Like at the end of the day tonight, I'm gonna I am just dreaming of my shower right now because I'm a little sticky. Yeah. But uh, like, you know, but you know, so and that's the nice thing about like uh, about about a game like or like a day in an indoor field. Like unless like it's really bad and there's really a bad group of players there or something like that. You know, it's really hard to walk away from a day at a North Field and be like, wow, that was a waste of the day. Like, it's, you're just so tired, it's hard to feel yeah. bad. Right. It's, no, it's so, and it's great. so, it's so, 25 bucks, 15. And if you really don't want to have that, 15 on a Friday night, you're playing from 5 to 9. Right. What's it cost? Adult nights, 20 bucks. Right. You yep. Yep. Yes. Yeah, exactly. 20, 20 bucks for hour. 6 hours of play. Yeah. You, it's it's pretty old cool. Sorry. It's, no. uh, and if you want that still kind of Milson crowd, but you want to try and go play, 
come by and try it out. Yeah. And we've obviously already gone over adult night a little bit. We should probably wrap up. We're going to wrap up the stream. Night. Uh, Regular gaming ends early this Saturday at yeah. 6 p.m. But fear not for those 18 And if you want to play the whole day, it's what? 30? Uh, I think we, I think we agree like. It's either 35 or 40 for the whole day. I think 30. You can get you can get what is it 13 hours of gameplay. Yeah. If you so 13 dollars yeah. for like 40 bucks. What are you gonna complain? 13 hours of 40 bucks. Yeah, okay. thir yeah, yeah, it's yeah. 13 yeah. dollars for 40 bucks. I'm sorry, I'm telling you. It's all uh, good. But 13 oh, dollars for 40 bucks. But then uh, obviously, time. don't forget about our anniversary party. Anniversary. Yes. August okay. 26th. Our eighth year. We're going to pull up the pre register We're going to pull up the pre-registration. Yes. Go on our Come website. On. And you're going to use PayPal. You're going to pre-register. It's $35. You're going to get to skip the line. Um, we're still trying to figure out whatever we do with the waivers, but we'll probably send over an here. email and announce about it. Put in whatever you're renting. Type in. And this is only if you want to play. Uh, we yeah. may be introducing something for, uh, you know, like if, if you want to spectate, but that'll be a little bit down the road. That's just small details. But uh, like, even if, like, it's definitely always great to show up um, to play on these days because we always unveil something new and great for our field. Like moving up to this for adult night, we're doing our lighting. That'll be 100 percent completed for the August event. <laughs> it's nice that we can unveil it. It's nice that we that we should be able to unveil it for um, for adult night. But that's really one of the things that we want to do for the August date. Another thing is we're going to be theming the buildings. Um, that's going to be another fantastic one. So we have a lot of stuff. So I really recommend playing if you want to. If you want to say that you were the first ones on there and really experience it firsthand before it evidently gets chewed apart by babies, you know that's that's very true. Yeah. Um, but Friday night you can play with Jet the Desert Fox, all those other clowns. Um, yeah, and then really Saturday, most likely the company that makes your gun, like the president or like some high-ranking official, will be there that you can talk with, shake their hand, and ask them questions that. You know, you might want to ask like the president of an airsoft company. Like, I have, like every time they come, I always have hundreds of questions. It's just so great. And sometimes they'll even be like, "You like that gun?" I've always, I, I, I can only say I've seen this done once, but I did see it happen. Some guy was like, some guy, yeah, you know, he was, this kid was just looking at a gun. I think it was like a pistol. I think, I think it was Palco. I think, you know, he was looking at it. He's like, "Wow, this is really cool." And it was towards the end of the day, and the guy was like, "You like it?" And the kid's like, "Yeah, no, this is an amazing pistol." He's like. Take it home with you. Here's the box. And he gave the pistol that he was showing to everyone today, and he gave it to this kid. And I'm just like, and the thinking about he's like, yeah, that guy just gave me this pistol. I'm like, are you serious? It's like a two hundred dollar pistol. So, anyways, but, uh, it's make sure that you're gonna be there. Um, we're gonna do raffles. There's gonna be gaming. And again, like I said, if you have any suggestions for people you want to see here, we've been reaching out. We hit up a couple of different people on Instagram. Hit them up on YouTube. Um, hopefully, we'll hear from them soon. Uh, Jed Leah, the 90 girl, usually comes out. We're trying to get a new boy, uh, Airsoftology, my boy John. Well, I don't know if he's my boy John necessarily, but. I'm excited for next week's topic because, uh, you know, I'm sure a couple of these people have logged out at this point, or you kind of found out, whatever, it's the end of the stream. But, um, uh, what? I'm sorry. <laughs> you can continue. Did I no, 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 we, we were just like, what, we were well, asking each other, stuff. what is the oh, topic? Oh, okay. Next week? But, um, so, because we were, so this is actually, I think this is one of our best streams yet because uh, everyone that you know has been watching this whole thing like um, everyone said this is a great stream um, they definitely want to see more topics one person had a suggestion of maybe a topic about airsoft is under attack we did brush upon that Ooh. before I was on Ooh. Yeah, uh, well, it might be worth it, it'll definitely be worth oh, revisiting I mean, what that was like 20 episodes ago yeah. right? like so um, we're that definitely, we're definitely should be I, I'm, I'm really happy that you guys are pleased with the format of how we're running this. And if there's any other comments, you know, things yeah, that you really like. Actually, we hope to get Gordon on soon. He said he could probably hop on during uh, when registration for <gasps> Auto Justice starts. So hopefully That'd we'll be awesome. on some. I mean, Gordon Yeah, on. absolutely. Actually, so, and that's cool. a legal question that I'm yeah, sure that you would know. Uh, do you have to be over 18 to enter a raffle because of legal issues? Uh, it is gambling, technically. Uh, uh, but it's, it's, it's one of those uh, great it's yeah, it's really pretty weird, yeah. We can't raffle a gun to an eighteen year old, but I mean to a less than eighteen year old unless parents were happy. Yeah, yeah. So like if so you can enter the raffle, like I'll say that. You know the raffle, like if you win a gun, like your parent has to come in, just meet just let us meet the parent and just be like, Hey, so your your son won a gun, we're are you okay with this? So long story short, so, yeah, I, I don't I see any issue with that. Raffles are okay because we're a business. It's when um like when we did the expo and a couple teams did raffles. Yeah. Um, that's a that's little, a little more black area. 
rather than yeah, bread. That's like yeah. a legit like sort of just because so, like, yeah. we will usually donate um, our the proceeds. I mean, you for the proceeds that we get from the raffle, we we will we won't like put it in our pocket or whatever. Um, so like and that and that's why I think it's more that gray area. Right. right yeah. Right. So if on your screen right now you can see this is the description. This is also the event for the. Um, Adult night. Adult night is going to have all of the rules, all of the specifications. So it's going to be most of our uh, normal rules, with a few ones that are how many people already saying they're coming. Adjusted. We already have 20, 30 feet interested, 27 going. I know that I had a guy that come in who never heard of us, came in, bought a full setup, gun, pistol, mags, the whole nine yards, and I told him about adult night. He's like, you're going to see me there. I'll right. be there. So like we're so I have a lot of people that don't have Facebook or anything, but they're very interested in going. Um, and it sucks because a lot of people are in 18 and they're like, oh, I just want to go. So I'm sorry for all of those right. who uh, you just wait a few. Hopefully in a few years you'll be able to. I uh, got them. Um, but <laughs> so hopefully in a few years you guys will be able to start joining us for either those or just in general, like. Personally, I always recommend going to an event. No, so nothing. Just do cool do stuff, bro. So join us for the eight year. It's gonna be awesome. We have people coming, and they're gonna be great. We have businesses oh, coming, and it's gonna be great. It's gonna be huge, as per usual. Hundreds of people through the door. Plenty of gameplay on our new field. The, uh, well, not new field, but we're gonna be adding additions to the field. Beaming. Some hardcore beaming. Yes. But wrapping up. Like I said, be there. Once again, thank you very much for watching, guys. Yeah. I absolutely love this stream. I'm yeah, glad to hear good. you. Good. I'm, I'm tired. tired. I'm, tired. I'm, I'm glad to hear you fun. guys liked it too. Yeah. Uh, thank you for Isaiah for joining yes, us. Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, cool. Hopefully, uh, yeah. Oh, Thursday's video. What is it? Thursday. We're doing um, a new, a short. Like we're trying to mix up everything. So we're trying to throw in some new segments. So it's Extreme Theory, it's me and Isaiah, and we're gonna talk about uh, different uh, kind of subjects so that to help like first timers or players in general. Cool. And this one's going to be based around uh, gear. More play characters. Yeah, experience. it's exactly like what we've talked about just in a short Digest. five minute video. Yeah. Maybe. So, but uh, like I said, thanks for joining guys. We will see you next like, week comment, on Tuesday, right? All that great stuff on what? Tuesday next week, right? Tuesday next week? Yes. Yeah, I can't be here for Monday, so I'm moving it to Tuesday. Right good time, 5 p.m.? Um, I might be closing the store either day so or probably week. 7 p.m. Yeah, probably, yeah, we'll probably, probably, yeah, we'll probably, probably 7 p.m. Probably 7 p.m. next Tuesday. Do we have a defined topic yet, or are we going to be at uh, No, but we'll, but we'll, 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 it'll be a good one. We're gonna really try. We're gonna really try to bring this toward like like this is like the debate corner, the debate couch. Yeah. <laughs> as long as, uh, as, long as you guys continue to keep it clean down in the comments, we'll try to we'll always try to do something Party. very interesting. Shake it up for you guys. Uh, Other than that, thank you guys so much. On to your talks. Feel bad about it. Dead James Sharks. I say see you guys this weekend. Bye.